On the bright San Francisco morning that Weston saw the gray shadow bone horror peering out at him from his own apartment window, the city became a realm of terror with no escape. For this evil spawn lurked in every air shaft and alleyway, feeding on the despair and screams of the modern city as the demons of old fed on the fears of their dark age. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar. Today, I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Fritz Leiber's Our Lady of Darkness. Our Lady of Darkness is a 1977 novel by Fritz Leiber, Grandmaster of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror. And I will say, uh, you might want to take my opinions with a grain of salt, because Fritz Leiber has become one of my favorite authors. Um in the past year or so. So this novel is technically considered urban fantasy, though it definitely doesn't fit what I think most would say the modern view of urban fantasy is. It's not a wizard detective in some urban environment. It is definitely set in San Francisco and Liber, I believe was one of those important um, characters in the history of speculative fiction of taking a lot of horror stuff from rural uh, countryside settings and putting it more in an urban setting. It also has a lot of psychological elements, especially Jungian psycho uh, psychology. Um, it also is autobiographical in some ways, um, as our main character, Franz Weston, sounds similar to Fritz Leiber. Um, he suffers or has suffered recently with alcoholism um, since his wife passed away. Um, and that is actually really similar to Leiber, whose wife had passed away. And he was suffering with alcoholism at the time he was writing the novel, living in San Francisco. So it starts us with setting the scene as San Francisco and the as atmosphere is pregnant and the tone is dark um, and it possibly sinister. It's uh, kind of mysterious. And then we meet Franz Weston, who is a writer of supernatural horror stories. He enjoys sci-fi and detective novels and again is a widower uh, who struggles with drink after losing his wife. He's not completely lonely though, as he's friends with his neighbors, uh, like Saul and Gunn, uh, and the floor beneath him, and particularly Cal, who's the floor below that, who's a musician in her late 20s and lives a couple stories down in the complex. Um, and they do have a somewhat interesting relationship. She's, it, she's definitely plays a great contrast, I would say, with, uh, well, the Lady of Darkness. Um, but I don't want to spoil that so anyways. So the most interesting character for sure is a dead one as far as characters go though. Um, it's from Franz's notes in a book he has. It's Clark Ashton Smith, the horror author who actually existed and a library actually knew. Um, if you haven't read Clark Ashton Smith, you should go read that. But he also mentioned several other real works like H.P. Lovecraft, Ambrose Bierce, um, Poe, Jack London, and Mar James, and uh, many more. Uh, I thought the most interesting one was that he actually mentions one of his own works. He straight up refers to Fritz Leiber. I think he just calls him Leiber, actually, but I mean, that's him, so that's just funny. Um, the title of Our Lady of Darkness itself is actually taken from Thomas de Quincey's uh, Suspiria de Profundis and the character uh, Mater Tenebrarum. Um, I believe Thomas de Quincey is actually the inspiration for another character similar in a vein to Clark Ashton Smith. Um, who is fictional and it's Thibaut de Castries. So uh, that he's uh, kind of at the root of the problems here. Uh, so related to this, uh, this book by de Castries actually is a book on the pseudoscientific magic of megapolismancy, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like, the magic of big cities kind of, right? Uh, though it's definitely dark. So, um, and it's, it's not a happy thing. Uh, so it's interesting, though, the same as urban setting is, like, bad, but being in an urban setting, rather than compared to, like, some Lovecraft stuff, is urban stuff bad, often not in the urban setting itself so much. Uh, though there's, uh, you know, whatever. So, um, but again, great use of Jungian psychology, which I'm not overly familiar with, but uh, the bits I am familiar with are pretty good, actually. I, um... I actually got scared by this novel, so uh, I would say it was pretty effective. I don't read a lot of horror. Uh, I think that's because a lot of horror is not so much what I want to read, like that slasher horror, that later stuff. Um, my buddy Raf uh, um calls this a novel that Stephen King wishes he could write. 
Take that as you will. I've never read any Stephen King. I might at some point. I'm not super eager to, to be honest, um, just based off what I know. So but the stuff in this book is kind of confusing uh, with the spookiness, and it's hard to tell if it's real or delusion. In some ways, it doesn't really matter, uh, which is why it's effective, because if it is real, it's because the power it's given um, by being in the city, but also by thinking about it, and also kind of by circumstances which you discover throughout the book that Franz is kind of unlucky. Uh, but then they're also called paramental entities rather than, say, like paranormal entities. So they are conjured by the mind, but they are real as well. There is one part of this book that I think might be a problem for some, as it is a little slower as there's a lot of exposition done. This is about halfway through the book when he talks with his poet friend Byers, who is actually based off a real life poet in San Francisco and Fran, a friend of Fritz Leiber's, and I think his last name was Fryer, but I'm forgetting the rest of that. Uh, this actually was originally published, um, serialized, I think, in two parts actually, as The Pale Brown Thing. It's a shorter version. Uh, the novel itself is very short anyways. It's less than 200 pages, the first edition paperback. Um, but it actually had only been serialized earlier in the year of this uh, novel's release. Uh, you can still read that one. Liber said that they were both, you know, the same story, just told at different times, essentially. I haven't been able to get my hands on the pale brown thing to compare it, but I'd really like to. I really enjoyed this book. Um, but, you know, beyond all this, we get some it's somewhat typical Liberian um, fare. We have a look at sexuality, um, which is interesting uh to say the least i always find his view on sexuality is I, I personally if you guys know me i don't like a lot of that stuff in books and for some reason the way library goes about it i always find it not uncomfortable <laughs> so uh take that as you will um we also definitely get the alcoholism coming through of course and uh interestingly we get like the somewhat like crafty and disdain for recent modern themes like skyscrapers with the Megapolis Mancy, Megapolis Mancy. There's no O in there, so I don't know. I'm just butchering that. Uh, but like things like chemical products, plastic, and the like. Um, but it's definitely interesting to see uh, how this is kind of biographical from Liber. I also will note that I put a note down here that there's a one point where he says the word Elvin rather than Elfin, and I'm like, is that like a? I was just wondering where he got that from. Is that from? Tolkien's influence because I know Tolkien had some influence on stuff like that so uh, anyways this has been Liam Williams Lyceum I hope you enjoyed this if you want to talk more about Liber and other books and give me some horror recommendations that are scary like this though not terribly scary though I found myself spooked out at night a couple times while I was reading it and uh, uh, I definitely do plan on reading something like Conjure Wife for example by Liber as well so anything in the similar vein I will take recommendations and i think i might have to go look at some of these authors that library himself actually mentions in the story with the metafiction which is just done so well but thanks for watching i'll catch you next time